What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so today I want to talk about a really, really quick tip. Anytime that I'm doing any demonstrations or clinics in Studio One, and anytime I'm editing my automation and working with audio events and editing in general, everybody always stops me when I fire off one key command, and that is create ranges on tracks. So first of all, let's get rid of all these tracks. I will hide and disable these, and let me expand this a little bit. I'm going to move over to my blade tool and I'm just going to make some cuts in this audio event. Perhaps we'll change the color a little bit so we can see the selected events a little bit more clearly. All right, so when it comes to working with volume automation, if I right click expand envelopes, you'll note that we have our volume automation lines here. Now, if you are not using the smart tool, not sure why you wouldn't be, but if you're not, we can, let me just deselect this here. We can create nodes like this, for example, and then we could adjust these automation nodes. But something that's much easier for me would be if I was using the range tool, I could make a highlighted selection and then we can use some of the new automation features that were added in 3.2 to adjust our automation. This to me is wasting time, it's wasting steps. A lot of the time that I'm automating, I might wanna move the entire section or an entire phrase all at the same time. What do I mean by that? Okay, well let's switch back to our arrow tool. Let's say that I wanted to adjust the automation for this point. What I actually want to do is create a range selection that equals this part. And then once I have that range selection, I would then pretty much do something like this, for example, where I would make this automation adjustment. So that's an extra step and we actually don't need to take it because we have this function in Studio One. It's Shift R will automatically create a range selection for any event that you have selected. So for example, even if you have, let's select these two, even if you have non-contiguous events selected, meaning that they're not butting up against each other, if I click Shift R, I've automatically transferred that selected event to a range selection, which is the exact same duration. Now then if we expand our envelopes, it's very easy for us to adjust our automation. So this tool for me, or this key command, is very, very useful, and I end up using it all the time. The other one I want to take a look at is, let's bring back these tracks, and I need to activate these again. I'm doing this by uh, shortcuts that I've created in Studio One, if you're wondering. Let's say that we wanted to do the same type of thing, maybe that there's this section, or perhaps this one, and instead of just making a range selection for that particular track, Let's say I wanted to make it across the whole track. And let's say that I had, for example, a bus channel that I wanted to automate as well. So I could select this and instead of choosing Shift R, I can choose Option R. So if I choose Option R, it will select essentially everything in your whole entire arrange window. So you can see that this range selection has been applied across everything. So Shift R is going to apply a range selection on the track based on the event that you've selected. And Option R is going to apply a range selection across all of your tracks in your entire session. So this could be useful because then maybe you have some bus automation and you wanted to do something like that. Very, very useful. I use these both, but to be honest with you, the one that I end up turning to most of the time is always the Create Ranges on Tracks, Shift R. Such a simple and useful tool, especially comes in handy when working with automation, like I mentioned. Just select the events you want, Shift R, expand your envelopes, and then you can adjust any automation using the Trimmer tool based on the range selections that are happening on your track. So that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you found this video useful. If you do, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.